Hello and welcome to Chronically Overdressed. I'm Christine, the Glambassador. Well, it is the end of September, which means that my favorite month is right around the corner. And you might be thinking that's October, and you are correct, but it's also October. For those of you that aren't familiar with the term October, it comes from a Facebook group challenge uh, that was started back in 2012 with uh, a few friends of mine. And where we basically, the whole month of October, we post photos of us wearing our best neckwear, ties, bow ties, ascots, um, and we just kind of show off our all of our ties. Before we go any further, I kind of want to make a little bit of a disclaimer. So I'm going to be using the term menswear as a simple way just to explain garments or clothing that are typically worn by men. I am of the firm belief that there really is no such thing as menswear or women's wear. Whatever clothing you are wearing at the time becomes the wear of whomever you are. But for lack of a better term and for brevity, I'll refer to menswear when generally speaking of collared shirts and the neckties that are worn with them. So when the group challenge came about, I was just starting to explore wearing menswear and having the challenge where my sartorially inspirational friends were also participating actually provided a, an awakening that I needed to fully explore this new side of my style. I've always admired the look of menswear on women. Uh, women like Marlena Dietrich and Katherine Hepburn, they were experts at this style. And although the items that they wore were generally worn by men and sometimes were actually men's clothing, men's trousers and shirts, uh, these women just exuded a feminine power that I absolutely adored. And so when I started to explore wearing menswear, um, I was concerned with looking a little too masculine. You know, I, I still wanted to have that feminine flair and that feminine power come through. And I also <laughs> was a little worried about looking like a waiter, to be honest. I, you know, I'd worked in food service for many years and wore a shirt and a bow tie or a tie. And I just kind of had that image in my, in my head. So when I was looking for pieces to put together, that was always kind of in the back of my mind. And I think that's really shaped how I have chosen the pieces that I, that I do want to wear. So I wanna show you some of the ways that I incorporate neckties and bow ties into my style. And I'll share with you some of my favorite October outfits that I've, I've put together over the years. And then I'll show you a collection of my ties and bow ties and also the lovely accessories that are paired with them. Most button down shirts will work just fine for wearing a tie or a bow tie, uh, but I like to look for things that have a bit of detail to them to make it a little bit more interesting than just wearing a plain white shirt. So something that has maybe some lace to it, a puff sleeve, and you know like this shirt has pin tucking so something that has a little bit more of a detail to it and then I, I do like to look for shirts that kind of hug close to the body rather than you know are a little bit blousey like this and then if you notice how high the collar is on this shirt versus the how low it is on this shirt most women's collared shirts are going to, going to be quite low like this. Uh, so you do have to kind of work with the tie so it doesn't hang super low. Um, you do kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit. I do prefer a higher neck. It makes it a lot easier to tie a tie or bow tie. Um, but most women's blouses just tend to be this a little bit lower on the neck. So that's something to keep an eye out when you are looking for some blouses or dresses. This blouse is from Collective and as you can see it has the higher collar 
which makes it really easy to wear a longer tie, especially with the high-waisted skirt. The lace on top and the puff sleeve just really give it a nice feminine flair. I'm wearing this vintage tie with beautiful images of Venice, Italy on it. This is one of my favorite dresses to wear with a tie, especially a bow tie, because it has this beautiful pin tucking detail right on the front. It's a dress from E Shakti, and I just love the jewel color. I have so many bow ties that actually go really well with this dress. And for cooler weather, just throw in a little cardigan. It's a great way to coordinate some of the colors in your tie or bow tie. This cardigan is of course from Emmy Design Sweden. I absolutely love all of their knitwear. You can never go wrong with a nice knit tie. There's something about the texture of the knit tie that really just adds something to your outfit. And I like to choose ones that are solid in color. That way I can wear them with different patterns and really help to bring out certain colors in my outfit. This is another dress from e Shakti, and I just love the higher collar. It makes it so much easier to wear a tie. This is a 1980s, 1990s blouse I got on Etsy, and aside from the gorgeous mustard color, I love the gathering at the top and the beautiful sleeves. This is one of my favorite looks. A crisp white shirt with a sweater vest and a beautiful tie. And of course, a collar bar really helps to kind of push that tie out a bit. And the tie has elephants on it. How great is that? was going to die in this outfit. This is a suit from Retro Revival and the blouse is from Collective. The tie is vintage as well as my spoon tie bar which I absolutely adore. For a more traditional look, I do like to have the Oxford shirt, and of course this is my lady tie, also known as a continental tie, but I prefer lady tie. Um, but the Oxford shirt is really great for wearing under sweaters or vests because it is flatter. Um, it doesn't have the embellishments on there, so it's not going to pucker anywhere. So having a nice white or like this is a baby blue Oxford is really great to have in your closet. And here's a 
another knit tie. This one is actually vintage with my fork and knife tie bar this time. Uh, but this shirt is, um, is great. It's got the pin tucking, it has ties on the sleeves. It does have a bit of a higher collar. Uh, so you can wear it with longer ties, you can wear it with high-waisted skirts or pants, and you're not gonna have that issue of ties hanging down too low. This blouse is from Unique Vintage and the skirt is from Voodoo Vixen. This is some of my collection of bow ties and lady ties. Here are just a few of my favorite ties. I also have a collection of tie bars and collar bars and a lot of these I've just found over the years at thrift stores and antique stores. It's just another way to add some flair to your outfit. Here's just a few of my favorites. I buy ties anywhere I can. I find them at um, vintage stores and thrift stores. Goodwill is a really great resource. Um, estate sales are fantastic. And I actually started my bow tie collection by buying a lot of 50 bow ties on eBay. I also have a friend in New York who's my tie dealer. He sells me ties, um, but you can find them pretty much anywhere Well, I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration on putting together your own looks with ties or bow ties. I haven't worked with ascots yet, but you know what? Maybe this month is the time to do it. <laughs> I'm not actually going to do a tutorial on how to tie a tie or a bow tie. There are numerous tutorials on YouTube and they do it way better than I do. So I'll link to a few for you in the description so you can have those resources. If you have some neckwear that you want to show off or you just want to get some more inspiration, come join us on the October Facebook group. We'd be happy to have you. Thanks again for coming to my channel and uh, have a happy October and we'll see you soon. Bye.